So uh, today we're going to talk about the Smash product on Spectra. Um, and first, let me say a few words about uh, why the Smash product. Um, so one thing that's that's a little bit confusing when you when you first start learning this is uh, is that there are actually two monoidal structures on pointed spaces. Okay, so on on pointed spaces we also have the just the Cartesian product, um, and there are a few reasons why the Smash product is the one that we choose to generalize to spectra. Um, one of them is that uh, it um, it plays well with suspension. So uh, first of all, the suspension of of a space can be hello. Let's try that one more time. Uh, <laughs> okay, so the suspension of a, a space can be um, can be described as a smash product. This is the circle smashed with x. Um, and likewise, if you take the the suspension of a a smash product of two spaces, then you can write this as a smash product. So this is suspension x smash with y. Um, also, the um, the uh, the smash product is left adjoint um, in pointed spaces to um, to the pointed mapping space. So this is left adjoint. To pointed maps out of X, um, where by this I mean I mean the space of um, the space of maps that send the base point to the base point, which is regarded as a pointed space, where the base point is the uh, is the constant map that sends everything to the base point. Um, right. So uh, so what we're going to try to do is um, is define a uh, monoidal structure on spectra with um, with some similarly nice properties. And before we before we start doing that, um, I want to write down what uh, what sort of properties we might be looking for. So, what do we want the smash product on spectra to do? So first of all. We expect that um, that it it defines a symmetric monoidal structure on spectra. Um, I'm assuming that everyone here knows what this means, but if you don't, just ask. Um, second, we might expect this monoidal structure to uh, be related in some way to to the model structure. So one thing that we could ask for um, is we could ask that this makes spectra a, a symmetric monoidal model category. Um, okay, so there there are a few ways of thinking about this, but basically this is analogous to um, to our discussion of enriched model categories, like topological and simplicial model categories a little while ago. So, um, so one of the ways of describing this is, is saying that it's, uh, that it's enriched over itself as a model category. And if we wanted to make that more, more precise, we could say um, if you have two co-fibrations of spectra, let's say i and j, uh, then there is this sort of uh, push out product map, which goes from a smash y co-product over a smash x with b smash y to uh, said that wrong
uh, into B smash Y. And this is supposed to be a co-fibration, which is acyclic. If I, I or J is acyclic. Okay, so this is one of the ways that you can define a monoidal model category. And again, there are these other sort of this this definition sort of adjoint to some other definitions. Uh, sorry, yeah. is there is there any way you could write that as like a diagram? I think you did that once before. It was like, like that. Yeah. Um, is there no okay. like. So the way that uh, here's what I did before. I, I think I I think I wrote down a version of this using the using the internal mapping spaces instead of the products. And then I said that there's there's a map. So well, let me see if I can if I can do this again. Um, there's a Okay, so let's see, we can pre-compose this with, with I, um, which gives us a map from A into X. We can also post-compose it with J, which gives us a map from B into Y. And then those two maps should agree when we do both things. So we get a map to the pullback over uh, maps from A into Y. Um, and now the condition should be that, uh, let's see, if I is a co-fibration and J is a fibration, then this map is a fibration. Um, and it's, it's acyclic if one of the two maps is acyclic. Uh, so, so then what this means in terms of um, in terms of a diagram is uh, if we think of these if we think of these objects as being some version of the sets of maps in between the various objects, then the, the target of the map is um, let's see, it's a, or like a point in the target of the map is a map from A to X um, and a map from B to Y. Uh, that are compatible with these maps. So in other words, it's a commutative square like this. And a point in the source is a lift in the diagram. So, um, so the, the statement that this map is a fibration is some sort of generalization of, of saying that, um, well, it's a, bit, it's a bit hard to interpret, but if, if one of the two maps is acyclic, then the statement that this is an acyclic fibration is sort of saying that there's a, there's a contractible space of lifts in such diagrams. Um, is that, that's what you were asking about, right? Yeah, thanks. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, so sorry, I, I wasn't being very clear about this, but when I'm, this, this notation here is supposed to stand for some, uh, some enrichment of spectra over itself. So, so instead of a set of maps between these two objects, there should be a spectrum of maps between these objects um, satisfying this, this axiom. Okay, um, so that's actually the next property that, that I was gonna talk about. Um, the, the smash product should have a right adjoint. In other words, if I, if I smash with some object X, then this has a uh, right adjoint um, And actually, I usually write it like this. So that the F here is supposed to stand for function spectrum. Um, and more generally, uh, not more generally, moreover, uh, if X is cofibrant, then this adjunction should be a Quillen adjunction. Um, so,
So there's a Quillen adjunction where the left adjoint is smashing with X and the right adjoint is the spectrum of functions out of X. So I should probably try to stay consistent with my notation. Um, so at the very least, we should try to distinguish this function spectrum from the, the space of functions that we've already talked about. Um, okay, uh, so we might also ask that, the, that this structure is compatible with the uh, enrichment uh, tensoring and co-tensoring by spaces. So in particular, if I smash with the suspension spectrum of something, um, then uh, this should be the same as smashing with that space using the enrichment. So here I'm using the monoidal structure on spectra, and here I'm using the enrichment, or sorry, the tensoring, which is a, which is a functor from spaces times spectra to spectra. Uh, this is adjoint to the condition that um, if I take the function spectrum between two spectra, then its infinite loop space is the internal mapping space between the two spectra, which we've talked about before. Um, and again, the, these conditions may not always be true, but they should be true under suitable cofibrancy and fibrancy conditions. So um, we might expect uh, this sort of condition to be true um, if k and x are cofibrant. And we might expect this condition to be true if X is cofibrant and Y is fibrant. Okay, another property um, is that the sphere spectrum, also known as the suspension spectrum of the zero sphere, uh, is the monoidal unit. Likewise, we should be able to, um, to recover the suspension in spectra by smashing with the, uh, with the circle. Um, and this is, you know, if we have this compatibility with the enrichment, then this follows immediately. Uh, likewise, the loop space of X should be maps out of the out of the circle. And finally, um, we could also ask for uh, this compatibility with the suspension spectrum, um, which is that the suspension spectrum is a monoidal functor. So, um, so there's a natural weak equivalence from the suspension spectrum of a smash product of two-pointed spaces to the, um, to the smash product of the suspension spectra. Okay. So there's one immediate thing that such a structure gives us, which is, it, is that it allows us to talk about homology. So we've already seen that um, homotopy groups and, uh, or stable homotopy groups at least, and, and cohomology groups have a very simple natural interpretation in terms of spectra. Um, well, homology does as well. Uh, so the, the nth reduced E homology of a space X um, can be defined as uh, maps from SN into X smash E, uh, sorry, into suspension spectrum of X smash E. So in other words, this is the, the, the nth homotopy group of suspension spectrum of X smash with E, okay? 
it's immediate from this definition that this functor um, is, is stable under suspension. Uh, and also, if we start with a cofiber sequence of, of pointed spaces, then the suspension spectrum sends it to a cofiber sequence of spectra. Um, and so we get a long exact sequence uh, on, um, on these homology groups as, as we expect. Okay. So these are a bunch of things uh, that would be nice to have. Um, and now let me tell you a theorem about them. And this is, a, this is due to uh, Lewis. So let's consider the following axioms. Um, what are these axioms on? So these are axioms on a, a category of spectra, uh, which we'll call sp as usual. So first of all, spectra has a, a symmetric monoidal product. Um, second, there's a suspension spectrum uh, leaf space adjunction with pointed spaces. Uh, third, the suspension spectrum of the zero sphere is the monoidal unit. Um, fourth, as we said, we, we expect the suspension spectrum functor to be, um, to be compatible with the monoidal structure in this sense. Um, but I'm actually going to say something uh, that's quite a bit weaker, which is just that the suspension spectrum is an oplax monoidal functor. Um, so in other words, rather than having this, uh, this natural weak equivalence, um, which is written down here, let's just ask for a map from the suspension spectrum of x smash y to suspension spectrum of x smash suspension spectrum of y. Um, and by the way, we can replace axiom four with a dual version, which is that uh, loops infinity is a lax monoidal functor. Lax monoidal functor. So in other words, there's a map from a loops infinity of x smash loops infinity y to loops infinity of x smash y. And these maps are supposed to be natural and they're supposed to um, respect the, the structure um, related to the, the monoidal structures. So the, the associativity um, isomorphisms and so on. And then finally, uh, so this object, which is obtained from the loop space suspension spectrum adjunction um, is supposed to be the same as the object we can define in spaces, uh, which is the colimit over N of loops N suspension N x. And by the same, I mean naturally weakly equivalent. OK, so these are five axioms. And Lewis's theorem is that no category satisfies these axioms. Okay, and by the way, these don't, um, we haven't actually, so these are the only axioms we're putting on the category we're calling, we're calling spectra here. Um, we, we haven't even said anything about a model structure, uh, which in some ways is part of the problem, but, um, but th these are a bunch of, I think, very natural things to ask for. And um, it's maybe somewhat surprising that, uh, that it's impossible to have all of these things. Um, so let me actually tell you, uh, the proof of this, or most of the proof at least, uh, is a very nice proof. 
So first of all, um, because the suspension spectrum of the zero sphere is the monoidal unit for a symmetric monoidal product, um, it's, uh, it's a commutative monoid object in spectra. Using the compatibility of either suspension spectrum or loop space with the monoidal structure, um, you can prove from this that uh, loops infinity, suspension infinity, S0, is a commutative monoid in spaces. And in particular, um, so this is a this is not a connected space. It's it's zero. The homotopy group is Z, but we can take the um, we can take the component of the base point. Uh, so this is a uh, connected commutative monoid in spaces. And so now there's a there's a, th a theorem from like the 50s due to Moore, which says that um, any such space, any connected commutative monoid, uh, is a product of eilenberg maclean spaces. Um, and this is not true for for this space. Um, there, there are a couple different ways to see this. I mean, uh, you can calculate its homology and show that there are some non-trivial um, Dyer-Lashoff operations on its homology or something. Um, one of the simplest ways to think about it is that its, its homotopy groups have an action by, by certain homotopy classes and the homotopy groups of spheres. So, and I saw this, um, this is a math overflow answer by Neil Strickland. Um, so, So Strickland says, think about the um, think about the map from pi two of this to pi three, which is given by precomposing with the with the hop vibration. Um, now, if your space is just a product of eilenberg maclean spaces, then um, then uh, this map has to be null homotopic because um, because it's null homotopic on in the homotopy of any individual eilenberg maclean space. Um, but what does this comes from? What does this come from? Well, this is the same as the second stable homotopy group of spheres, uh, and this is the same as the third stable homotopy group of spheres. And so this is just um, this is just multiplication by eta in the stable homotopy groups of spheres, which is not. Uh, equal to the zero map. So um, uh, right, eta squared is in here and eta, eta cubed is in here and eta cubed is non-zero. Okay, so this is not equal to zero. Um, okay, so this is the proof. Uh, if if you have all of these axioms, then um, then loops infinity, suspension infinity, S naught is, is forced to be a commutative monoid in spaces, uh, but somehow this is way too strict. Um, this forces it, its space point component to be a product of eilenberg maclean spaces, and that's that's just not true. Okay. So um, the, the idea here is that uh, somehow with these axioms, we're asking too much. And in particular, we're asking the sphere spectrum to be sort of a strictly commutative ring spectrum. Uh, a, a strictly commutative monoid in the category of spectra. Um, and we shouldn't expect this to be true. Uh, instead, what we should expect is, is we should expect it to be a, a monoid that's commutative sort of up to highly coherent homotopy. Um, so if you've heard this before, it's supposed to be an E infinity ring spectrum, which is, uh, which is a weaker notion than being a strictly commutative ring spectrum. Um, so, uh, but this is a, this is a problem because um, 
you know, it means it's, it's going to be kind of hard to, uh, to, to actually define a smash product. And in particular, we're going to have to, to um, give up some of the conditions that we were hoping for. So are there any questions so far? Let me check the chat. So this is when something is like a strict community monitor. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. OK, um, so I want to talk about uh, a few different um, approaches to building Smash products. Um, and I'm going to start with a bit about the first one that I learned, which is, uh, which is the one that's described in Adams as Blue Book. Um, so uh, this, is, uh, this is originally due to um, to Boardman, I think, and Adams kind of modified the, the whole thing a little bit. Uh, but here's what it is. Um, so this is a this is something that we can do on the on the category of um, of spectra that we've been talking about, and uh, if you set it up right, it induces a symmetric monoidal structure on the stable homotopy category, um, but not on not on the actual category of spectra itself. Uh, but so here's what we can do. Um, so this this is. Ordman's definition, uh, X smash Y uh, has the following terms. So the spaces in the spectrum are, um, are these spaces. And the structure maps in the spectrum are, well, to go from each space to the next space, uh, we either raise the index on the spaces of x or we raise it on the spaces of y. And so we can go from each space to the next space by easy, either using a structure map of x or by using a structure map of y. So we have a map from suspension x0 to x1, and we smash that with y0, and that gives us our first structure map, um, and so on and so on. Uh, Okay, so this is a thing that we can define. Um, now, the problem with this is that uh, it's it's very obviously not associative. Uh, so, for example, if we take say the two space of x smash y, then smashed with c. So this is the one space of X smash Y smashed with the one space of Z, which is X1 smash Y0 smash Z1. And this is not the same as what we get if we do things in the other order, which is um, Okay. Now you could say, um, well, maybe it's it's associative up to homotopy, um, and I think this is true. Uh, but it takes a lot of a lot of work to do. So then, so what Adams does with this definition is is he says actually um, instead of this way of smashing x and y, there are a lot of different ways of smashing x and y. So uh, so Adams generalizes this. by saying, uh, given any partition of the natural numbers, you have a smash product sort of indexed by that partition, where the zeroth space of this is x0 smashed y0, 
And in general, um, you obtain the n plus one space from the n space. by raising the index of x if n is in b and of y if n is in c. Okay, so this first definition is what you get if you let, I think, b be all the even numbers and c be all the odd numbers. Um, but you could decide to raise the indices on y more slowly than those on x or um, to do each of them like some, some number of chunks at a time uh, or something like that. Um, and then what he, what he does is, uh, is sort of defines this, um, uh, this object that, that contains a bunch of different versions of these, of these, handy, of these handcrafted smash products and says, um, so these, these are equivalent to each other. Uh, as long as uh, B and C are both infinite. And there's some sort of god awful construction for, for um, proving that you get something that's associative and commutative on the, on the stable homotopy category. Um, so that's about all the detail that I want to go into about that. Um, uh, but, uh, but this is a thing that you can do. And uh, I guess the upshot of it is that um, if, you're, if you're fine doing things just in the stable homotopy category, then, um, then you can work with these, uh, with these sequential spectra that we've been talking about. And, and there is a way to, to make these monoidal notions work out. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm trying to give you the impression that actually like dealing with this seriously is, is not something that you really want to do. Um, and uh, and there, there are some ideas for getting around it. Um, one is to recognize that there's kind of an asymmetry in this definition that we've taken. And, and likewise, any, any one of these handcrafted smash products is going to have a similar asymmetry to it. Um, so, so one of the things that we could think um, so one of the things that we could think is, for example, the one space of x bash y uh, sort of wants to be both x1 smash y0 and x0 smash y1. And so maybe instead of deciding between these two, these two objects, we should, we should sort of, um, we should define it to be some space that contains both of them. Uh, Another idea is to, instead of treating these indices that we're seeing on our spectra as just numbers, um, uh, we, sh we should treat them as living inside a, a category with more structure to it. Um, so uh, this is a, maybe a bit harder to convince you of if you've, if you've never seen it before, but, but let me try to give you a sense of why this is a good idea. Um, so, so first of all, we should ask the question, why are spectra indexed by the natural numbers in the first place? Well, spectra are indexed by by the natural numbers um, so that they can be related by the spaces in the spectra. Uh, can be related to each other by suspensions or by loop spaces. So we have all, the, all of these structure maps from suspension k x n to 
x k plus n. This is the same as the k sphere smashed with x n. Um, but uh, really, there, there's more structure on, on the k-sphere than, than is suggested by the index. Um, so uh, this has uh, this sk is the same as the one-point compactification of rk. Um, and so it has an action by the k-dimensional orthogonal group. Um, and in particular, the, the k suggests that it has um, that there are uh, that, that there are, there are kind of k coordinates on it, um, but we could change our coordinates by by applying any action of the orthogonal group. Uh, so we can think of the the index here as standing not just for a number, but as but uh, as for a copy of R k um, that really has uh, some of the symmetry of R k acting on it. So we can replace um, the post set n, which is indexing our spectra, uh, with the um, with the category of finite dimensional uh, real vector spaces. and isometries. Okay, and by the way, maybe we don't have to use the entire action of the orthogonal group here. Um, maybe instead we could say that uh, there's an action of the symmetric group, the symmetric group just by permuting the k-coordinates here. And, um, and so uh, we could think of that as, as, as sort of acting on things. Okay, but let me make some definitions rather than just giving motivation forever. Um, Uh, Sean, are you talking about the, sorry, I was just looking at chat. Are, are you talking about Lewis's proof or? The beginning of my comment was awesome. This is great. And okay. then I didn't delete that before <laughs> asking the question. You were talking about the handicraft smash product and showing yeah. it's associative. And that's what the props and operads question was about. I know um, we haven't covered those yet. I was just curious for a teaser if there was one i don't, I don't think, think that sorry go, go on Eva. i don't think that technology was like widely available when adam yeah. wrote his blue book um, I, I, in fact it, i don't think yeah, it sorry. wasn't but boardman is responsible for both so that's why i was curious if maybe the seeds of it were some somewhere there yeah maybe i mean so this, like the symmetric and orthogonal spectra, I, I think really kind of motivate um, talking about operads. So uh, like, um, but the, this, this way, I mean. I think they all, all the models motivate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 you're good, you're good. Um, I'm, just, I'm just thinking like, yeah, so I, I have to admit, like I, I haven't. It's been it's been years and years since I actually looked at this section of the blue book, and I, I as I was looking at it today, I don't like completely understand what's going on. Um, there is some there is some construction involving gluing a bunch of these handcrafted smash products together, uh, and that's that feels a little bit sort of operatic, but um, but I think it like I, I think it's a bit more naive and like, you know, th things become a lot like uh, cleaner when, when you actually understand things like operas. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's relevant that like, even knowing that good coherent models of spectra exist that have the correct homotopy category is enough to like, do a lot more than one would otherwise, even if you don't know the details of a construction yeah. you can still go like quite far um 
without having to worry about opera ads or a bunch of other stuff that like we couldn't do before. I don't know, whenever Bachstadt first did the stuff or Ladakis did. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, yeah, I, I also agree with that, Eva. Uh, anyway, um, let me, uh, yeah, so, so let me say a bit about these, about, about these models. Um, so, uh, so let me talk about symmetric spectra, first of all. So a, um, so a symmetric space is a collection of spaces xn indexed by the natural numbers where each one has an action by um, the nth symmetric group, uh, which I'm writing with the sigma to distinguish it from the, the spheres. So, uh, another way of saying this is that um, it's a functor from um, from the groupoid of finite sets and uh, isomorphis isomorphisms between them to spaces. And by spaces, I mean pointed spaces. And there we go. So this category has, um, let's, let's write sigma spaces star for this category. And this category has a symmetric monoidal structure. Um, where the nth space of X smash Y is the same as um, the co-product over uh, I and J adding up to N. of this. Okay, so the point here is that if you smash xi with yj, then the resulting thing has an action of sigma i times sigma j. Um, and what we're doing here is we're inducing this up to an action by sigma n. So this defines a symmetric monoidal structure on the category of symmetric spaces. Um, and I think there's a way of describing this as kind of a left con extension. So if you think of it as um, if you think of it as a functor out of uh, finite sets and isomorphisms, then you could say uh, to evaluate um, x smash y in some finite set A, this is the co-limit over partitions of A. Of x evaluated at B smashed with y evaluated at C. Okay, uh, so the idea here is um, if, if I want to think about the fifth space in my, in my smash product, uh, I, I want two of the indices to go to X and three of the indices to go to Y, but, um, but, uh, but I can choose any, um, any partition of, of my, my set of five indices into some set of two indices and some set of three indices, and, and that should give me a piece of the smash product. So in particular, um, there's a space in here called the sphere spectrum. Sorry, when, when you when you say um, you can write it as some uh, Khan extension, yeah, is that by like deconvolution or is it something else? That is one of these words that everyone says, and I still don't know what it means. Um, you, you tell me, is this is this deconvolution? Uh, I don't know. I don't know it in that form. Um, okay. uh, deconvolution is like you 
you use the smash product. Uh, I, I didn't want to derail this. Um, okay. We well, can talk about it after if you want to. Um, it, so there's, there's some, there's this Minoto structure on finite sets that's, that's involved. If that, if that helps. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's talk about it afterwards. Um, right. So anyway, so, so here's an example of a symmetric space. Uh, we can, take the space, the symmetric space whose nth uh, object is the n sphere. And this has an action by sigma n or sigma nx just by permuting the coordinates on the sphere. Um, and this is actually a commutative monoid. In... Sorry, Paul, do you mean permuting the factors? Yeah, sure. I, I'm thinking of it as the one point compactification of Rn and then. Ah, okay. Right, because it fixes yeah, the, the base point. Thank you. Yeah. But yeah, that's true. This is S1 smashed with itself n times and, and sigma n can permute the factors. Yeah. Um, so this is a commutative monoid in symmetric spaces. Um, and now we say that a symmetric spectrum is an S module in symmetric spaces. Okay, so let's think about what structure this gives us. Um, the the module multiplication uh, so so we're supposed to get a get a multiplication map from s smash x to x for any symmetric spectrum x so if we think about what this does on the nth space um, the nth space of this of this smash product uh, looks like this. Um, and to be a map of, uh, of symmetric spaces, then um, this map should be sigma n equivariant. Uh, but all of the sum ends in this, in this big wedge sum are, um, are induced sigma n modules. So uh, this is supposed to be sigma n equivariant. But that's equivalent to saying that these maps, si smash xj to xn, are sigma i cross sigma j equivariant um, using the natural inclusion of sigma i cross sigma j into sigma n. Um, in particular, if we take i equals one, we have these natural maps from s1 smash xj to x1 plus j, um, which is part of the, the definition of a spectrum that we've been working with so far. So, um, so you can see that this this sort of enriches the the um, the definition of of a sequential spectrum which we've been using so far. Uh, as as we did for sequential spectra, there's there's a way there's a very similar way of defining the um, the model structure on this. So uh, we can define a uh, level wise model structure. in which vibrations and weak equivalences are, um, are level-wise vibrations and weak equivalences level-wise vibrations and weak equivalences of um, sigma n spaces. Um, and then we can enlarge the class of co-vibrations on this. Um, so we end up with a stable model structure 
sorry, enlarge the class of weak equivalences on this um, by forcing all maps which induce isomorphisms on stable homotopy groups to be weak equivalences. Okay, so um, so Barnes and Reutzheim were actually being a little bit clever here by um, talking about sort of carrying out these steps for sequential spectra, um, because uh, this is this is not the the sort of the earliest ways that people were were defining model structures on sequential spectra, um, but uh, but this is how. Um, so I think this uh, this whole idea of, of symmetric spectra is due to um, Hubby, Shipley, and Smith, and uh, and by kind of taking this construction of the model structure and projecting it back into the past, then um, then we get this this story that we followed for sequential spectra. Okay, so the big theorem here um, is that this defines a um, so symmetric spectra. Uh, is a symmetric monoidal stable model category where the monoidal structure is compat compatible with the model structure um, and it's quillant equivalent to our model category of sequential spectra. Sorry, Paul, I have a question. Yeah. The first is these weak equivalences, uh, do you mean after I take fixed points with respect to all subgroups, I still have a weak equivalence? Yes, on I think so. Level? Yeah. And then I'm slightly confused as it's, um, I think it's famously the case that symmetric spectra fail to have the weak equivalences be um, detected by isomorphisms in homotopy. You first have to vibrantly replace things. Yeah, um, you're, Which I'm, I'm sure that you're right. Uh, so yeah, that, that's my bad. Um, what should I? I think maybe pi star isomorphisms on vibrant replacements, I think that's all you can do. Okay, thanks. Uh, it's it's sort of like the one good thing about other models of spectra yeah. that is, is that they don't have this, but that the symmetric spectra is so beautiful. They're so elegant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, th thanks for the correction, yeah. Um, uh, anything else about this? I think it's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so let so um, let me say a few words about about a similar um, a similar story for orthogonal spectra. Um, so for orthogonal spectra, uh, we want to do a very similar thing, um, but using the orthogonal groups instead of the symmetric groups. So one of the ways of saying this is is we can work with um, we can say an orthogonal space is a functor um, from the following category to spaces uh, from the category of finite dimensional. real inner product spaces and isometries to spaces. And by isometry, I mean it's supposed to it's supposed to be bijective as well. So um, so the source of this is a groupoid uh, and it has the property that, um, so this is equivalent to um, the, the category whose objects are the, the natural numbers 
uh, where maps from n to n is either O n if um, m equals n or nothing otherwise. Uh, we have to be a bit more careful here because so so in other words, I want a bunch of spaces um, indexed by the natural numbers where the nth space has an action by O n, and I also want that action to be continuous. Um, so uh, so somewhere in here we should say that O n acts continuously. Um, on on the nth space. So we get this category of um, O spaces. This has a smash product where the nth space of X smash Y is given by this formula. We can define the sphere spectrum by saying that its nth space is um, is Sn viewed as the one point compactification of Rn, and this has a natural action by On. And we can say that an orthogonal spectrum is a module over over. Um, the sphere spectrum in orthogonal spaces. Um, we can carry out these these same steps, I think, without this with without this correction. Although, tell me if I'm wrong about that. But um, so there's there's a level wise model structure on this, and then you can invert the pi star isomorphisms, um, and this gives you a stable model structure. And so the the theorem is that. Um, there's a stable model category of orthogonal spectra, um, which is a symmetric monoidal model category under the smash product. Okay. So this is, oh, sorry. I, sorry, I think I need to correct my correction potentially. Okay. Um, since you did symmetric spectra in spaces and not simplicial sets, I'm no longer sure. Okay. Um, but definitely you don't need it for, ortho for orthogonal spectra. Okay, that's good to know, yeah. Um, Right. Yeah. So. So. Uh, yeah. Let me. Let me just say a few. Like, put a few names on this. So this. Um, this idea uh, comes from Lewis May Steinberger originally. Uh, actually, maybe just Lewis and May. So Steinberger collaborated on this book where they where they did a bunch of equivariant homotopy theory based on this framework, um, and. Uh, and you can tell that there's a similarity between these two stories, um, the way that I've presented them and the, the general framework for, um, for constructing categories of spectra like this is a paper by Mandel, May, Shveda, Shipley from 2001. Uh, so they say that these are both special cases of something called diagram spectra. Um, yeah. The book of Lewis Mann Steinberger is frequently referred to as the Yellow Peril, and uh, Peter. I mean, they definitely didn't do any model categories in that book. Okay. And I heard a story that Peter wanted to write EKMM without model categories, which is madness. That's crazy. Yeah, and then he like learned it all in two weeks or something. <laughs> And then he's like, okay, I, it's fine after all. Uh, yeah, I've been convinced. <laughs> this is nuts. 
Yeah. There was there was a good question in the chat. Jeff Carlson asked if we should consider having an, a global upper bound on the inner product spaces, like some countably infinite uh, dimensional inner product space that they all live in. Yes. Yeah. That that is what they do. Um, is there any? What is the reason for doing that? Is it is it just like a set set theoretic issue? I think it's a set theory issue. Okay. This comes up more prominently in equivariant things. Yeah. Um, where it seems like it's more of an issue there, but I I guess it's set theory, but I don't really understand set theory. So. Yeah, I'm not sure if I believe in set theoretic issues really. Um, <laughs> but you know, not to like. Jacob does. Okay. I don't know. It's a good reason to not. Sorry, I'll stop. Uh, yeah, sorry. So, are there are there any other questions uh, or comments? Um, I can say something about day convolution now, if you want. Sure. Um. So, maybe I'll, um. If you scroll down, I can like annotate the. I could also let you share if you want to, if you have something that you can. Uh, oh, this is this this is fine. I think. Okay, sure. Um, so, so the general idea is you. Um, so the reason it comes up here is because, as you said, there's this thing about diagram category, uh, diagram spectra. So you realize spectra as functors from something into something, right? Um, so. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, if you have some, if you have a pair of, uh, functors, um, where, so I want, uh, C to be enriched in V where, so V has to be monoidal. I also want C to be monoidal. Um, then I can build a monoidal structure on this category of functors from C to V. Um, and the way I've seen it done is like this. Um, so you take sort of the naive thing uh, where this is just the functor F cross G. And then you take the Khan extension of that along the monoidal structure in C. Um, and that gives you the like correct version of F tensor G. Um, so uh, the reason I think about this a lot is because it comes up, it's how you get the correct monoidal structure on Mackie functors. Um, but if you are thinking about spectra as um, functors from some indexing category to pointed topological spaces, then you use the smash product on pointed topological spaces um, and whatever the monoidal structure is on your indexing category to, to build a smash product. Yeah, so that, that is exactly what's going on. Right, both of these, both of these categories, these indexing categories that we talked about are... Uh... Oh, it's all right. Uh... So both of them are symmetric monoidal. This this category of finite sets and isomorphisms is symmetric monoidal under under um, disjoint union, and this category of uh, inner product spaces is symmetric monoidal under direct sum, and that's and in both cases the smash product is the date convolution. Yeah, so that's a really good point. Um, anything else? Jeff, Jeff pointed out in the chat. Yeah. That, um, regarding set theory, that there's no reason you might want an indexing category any larger and that things could become model dependent if you do make things larger as to whether or not, uh, your co-limits indexed on a proper class even exist. 
yes, but should we be taking co-limits index by a proper class in the in the first place? I I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I like but things I, I, becoming I think model really dependent, but things becoming model dependent is uh... Oh, I see. Okay, so Jeff is saying that the uh, that the homotope the homotopy groups of a of like an orthogonal spectrum would be a co-limit index by all of the finite dimensional real inner product spaces. And yes, that does that does seem like a problem. Uh, I, so I, I see your point. I don't like it, but I do see it. Uh, <clears throat> would you mind just saying like a couple words about uh, how, why, why, for example, the definition of symmetric spectrum doesn't violate the Lewis theorem from before. Like I'm yes. trying to pin down what's exactly the what's right. The what goes theory. wrong? Yeah. Um, so I think I mean, first of all, this thing that well, we're not we're not sure about this thing that Sean mentioned, but um, I think that wait, let me look at the Lewis theorem again. Um, I think that the thing that that goes wrong is uh, is either number two or number five. Um, so there's some the the infinite loop space that's that that you get from a symmetric spectrum is is more complicated than than the standard infinite loop space you get from a sequential spectrum. Hmm. I think, but if if someone knows better than me, please please say. Um, I think each of the different models of spectra via like negate a different one of these conditions of Lewis's theorem, like EKMM spectra I believe the sphere is not the monoidal unit, or at least something like that on a point set level. Um, it's all weird. Yeah, I, I think it has to do with the infinite loop space, but I don't I don't remember. Uh, That would make sense, I think, because of the homotopy groups not being detected by yeah. weak equivalences. Um, but I'll, I'll get back to you because it's a it's a good question. Thanks. 